All right, everyone, here's a tutorial on getting started with the labyrinth. Uh, and again, you want to use both variables and functions for this one, as well as integrated motor encoders. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a mouthful there, but let's take a look and see what we want to get going here. Okay, so again, the labyrinth challenge looks something like this. Uh, you're trying to navigate through this maze. We're going to start off here in this red box where it's marked A. Move forward, go to the left, move to the right, and then finally end up in this uh, shaded area that's black. Okay, all right, so to get going here, again, I personally, I do like to uh, start off just from a file that I had before, so I've got my, right now this is my Sentry Simulation 1, so I'll go ahead and start off with that one. I'll hit Save As, uh, make sure you're saving this to your home drive. I have a folder going already, and this one's going to be called Labyrinth, Labyrinth Example. Okay, I'll hit Save. Uh, again, in green here, I'm going to start changing some of these so that it is reflecting what I'm working on. So this is the labyrinth challenge. Uh, I've got the brief description is program the robot to, I'll just say, navigate the labyrinth. All right, perfect. Okay, so first off, <clears throat> um, I'm going to try to set up my function and I'm going to initialize a couple of variables. Okay, so first off, um, I know, for example, I want to. I know I'm going to want to move forward. Okay, and let me get rid of some of this code here. Okay, and I'm going to move forward using my integrated motor encoders. Um, so I'll leave some of that in front of. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a void function. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, my function. Just I'll keep it simple. I'll call it move forward. And within this, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a variable that my move forward is going to be based on some sort of uh, integer and that integer is going to be the encoder counts. All right, so that number is going to change depending on uh, essentially what I want, how far I want to move forward. Okay, once I've got my void set up, again this is a function that I'm going to reuse over and over again for move forward. Uh, I'm going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and this is uh, where I'm going to put in the meat of my function. This is going to what I, I want to always do. All right, so like I said um, from before, we're going to want to use integrated motor encoders. Uh, so the function for that it looks a little bit different. We want to type in n, the letter n, motor encoder. Okay, as you start typing it, it should fill in and turn blue to say that it recognizes it. So n motor encoder, and these are connected to your motor. So I'm going to actually call this left motor, and I want to set that equal to zero. All right, so this is me um, clearing my encoders, making sure that it's counting starting from zero. Okay, and like usual, I like to write in my comments, so I'm going to say this is equal, equal, or sorry, backslash, backslash, this is clearing encoders. Next up, I'm going to set up my while loop. So while, and what I want in my while loop, again, it's going to be open and close parentheses here. I want to read my n, n motor encoder, and I'm going to go ahead and just count my, it doesn't really matter, I'll count my left motor. Make sure I type that in correctly. n motor encoder, and I want it to move forward as long it is as it is less than the number of encoder counts, okay, and that's where I have my variable I set up in here, integer encoder counts, and so I'm going to type in that variable that I'm going to relate it to encoder counts right there. Okay, so now inside the body of my while loop, this is where I'm going to make sure that it's this is kind of what I want it to do. So I want both my motors to turn on. I'll say motor left motor is equal to and you know what actually I'm gonna instead of so typically we say 127 for full speed you know I'm gonna make another variable this is something that I, I'm gonna add up to the top here and this is uh, another variable I'm gonna call this motor speed okay and I'm gonna initialize that right now I'm gonna say that it's 127 okay the, the uh, the reason why I'm going to do it this way is if I want to change the motor speed later, instead of having to retype it over and over again, um, now I can just have it in one spot. If I change this 127 number, 
everywhere that says motor speed, it'll change that number as well. So I'll do that for both the left motor and the right motor. Set that equal to motor speed, and that should be good. Okay, so now once I've got that set up, I'm gonna, this is from my previous code, so I'm gonna remove this. Go ahead and delete this stuff right here. Oops. Let's try that again. Delete that, and delete this section. Okay, so I'm starting from scratch here. So <clears throat> uh, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I want to move forward, right? So let's say to call this function now, I'm gonna just type in move forward and inside the parentheses, right? I've set it so that this is the number of encoder counts. Okay, so each encoder count is about 627. And so uh, you know, I'm just gonna guess a number for now and then we'll take a look at it in the virtual worlds, right? So I'm just gonna, let's say 1500 for now. Uh, let's make it bigger so I can make sure I can get far enough. Okay, move forward 3,000. Okay, let's start off with that. Also, if you want, you can create more functions here, depending on what you want to do. If you want to make one that's, for example, um, to lift the arm or something like that, you can do that. Okay, I'm going to compile the program, make sure everything's good, looks good so far, and I'm hit download to robot. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, so if I check out my labyrinth code, and remember, I always want to have my motor and sensor uh, debugger windows up here. If they are not showing up for you right now, you'll want to come back over here to robot, click on debugger windows, and make sure the motor and the sensors are both selected here. Okay. Now, the benefit of using the um, integrated motor encoders is that these show up now with your um, motor debugger window. So I'm going to come back over here to motors. I've got my right and left motor and I'm going to keep an eye on my encoder counts right here. Okay, so let's hit play and it's running, it's running. I want it to stop right there. Okay, so I'm going to hit pause. Oh, sorry, it blew right through it. Let me try that again. Actually, maybe I'll just let it run out. So I'm going to hit play and right now it's going to stop at 3000. Okay, and actually 3000 looks like I guessed perfectly there, so it's like right where I kind of wanted to stop. And so, uh, but if I didn't get that number correct, I would have to come back through here and change the encoder counts, right, where I, where I put the here, the 3000. I might change that number so that it goes a different distance. Okay, now similarly, I'm going to set up a, a separate function here for my turns. Okay, and I'll do one of them and then you... Uh, I'll let you kind of play around with the second one. Okay, so my second void, again, I want this above my task main. I'm going to call this, I want to turn left next, right? So I'm going to call this turn left. And this is also going to be based on encoder counts. Okay, notice here I do not need to uh, type in integer again because it's already been uh, defined up here as an integer. Okay, so here, um, open and close curly bracket. Now, uh, a lot of this I can actually copy and paste again, right? So I still want to clear the encoders. And uh, actually, I forgot some comments here. So this while loop is to move forward while less than a given number of encoder counts, okay, something like that. Okay, so here for a left turn, so if I'm thinking about a left turn here, I want to uh, left turn, point turn means that my left side is going to move backwards and my right side is going to move forward. Okay, so instead of uh, my left motor counting, I'm going to count my right motor because I like to count positive. It's a little easier to, to keep track of um, and then I don't have to keep track of negatives. right? So I'm going to count my right motor instead. My right motor is going to move forward. My left motor, I have to make sure that that's negative. Okay, so that's really the only difference I'm I'm cha I'm changing here is making the uh, left motor negative and my right motor staying positive. All right, now I'm going to go call my function down here in task main. I'll say turn left. That's what I called it. You can call it really whatever you want. And uh, I think it's about one wheel rotation to turn properly. So I'm going to say let's just try 650 for now. Uh, this is just from my experience. Um, as you start playing around with this more, you'll you'll get an idea of what numbers to use. Okay, let's hit download to robot. 
Oh, just kidding. You do need to uh, declare it again. So I'll, I'll call that an integer. Sorry. Uh, so integer encoder counts. My fault. My fault. All right. I'll try that again. Download to robot. And let's see what we get. I'll refresh it. Okay. Hit play. It's moving forward. Notice my encoder count reaches 3,000. Stops. Turns on a dime. And it almost hit it perfectly right just maybe actually a little bit further so for example instead of 650 uh, let's try 670 just for kicks and see if that does well download to robot refresh hit play it's going forward stop turn and it looks pretty good to me okay so again that's kind of a nice little perk um, I'll show you one final thing that I mentioned earlier so now this motor speed I set it to 127 right that was the max speed now if I wanted to all I have to do is change this number once I'm going to change it to half the speed so about 63 and hit download to robot and now if I refresh this hit play I notice I'm going half the speed Right, so uh, that makes it really easy to change the speeds by creating a variable, and as you saw there, creating some functions. I can reuse my move forward function now. I'm just going to change the encoder count value to see how far I need to go, and uh, so on and so forth. As a side note, you might need to lift up this arm, so I might even create a, a function that uh, lets you to move up the arm, and then moving, uh, kind of going from here. We can keep using a lot of these functions after you've made the function once. You know, you can copy and paste it into all your other code moving forward. Okay, uh, well, good luck. Hopefully you can get the rest of the labyrinth finished up and uh, submitted for your assignment.